Welcome to Rock and Roll Flashback. I'm Bill Price, and we'll be looking back at some of rock and roll's greatest artists, songs, and stories. Today on Rock and Roll Flashback, I'll be spotlighting the history of Redbone, the most successful Native American rock band. The Redbone story begins in the central California town of Coalinga. Patrick and Candido Vasquez Vegas were brothers of Yaqui, Shoshone, and Mexican heritage. Pat played bass, and Candido, who went by the nickname of Lolly, played guitar. Both brothers also performed vocally. When Pat was just 17 years old, he won a singing contest and a recording contract. However, he and Lolly eventually decided to make the move to Los Angeles, hoping to make a name for themselves. Once they made the move to Southern California, they played in various clubs on Sunset and Hollywood Boulevards, under several names, including Pat and Lolly, the Vegas Brothers, the Crazy Cajun Cakewalk Band, and the Avantes. When surf music came on the scene in the early 60s, they attempted to cash in with surf songs such as Gypsy Surfer, Wax Em Down, and The Phantom Surfer. On an interesting note, the Avantes featured Mike Kowalski, a future Beach Boys and Session drummer. Their surf recordings subsequently earned them an opening slot on one of the Beach Boys tours. The Vegas Brothers also recorded the singles Let's Go as the Routers, Surf Stomp and Batman as the Marquettes, and Hot Rodder's Choice, Don Patrol, Double A Fueler, and Satan's Chariot as the Deuce Coops. On the 1963 Deuce Coops recording sessions, they received help from Glenn Campbell, David Gates, and Leon Russell. In 1964, they recorded as the Sharks, releasing the singles Big Surf and Robot Walk. In Los Angeles, they performed at several clubs, such as the Prelude, the Peppermint Tree, the Haunted House, the Million Dollar Club, and Gazzari's. Pat and Lolly also performed throughout the 60s at venues on the Las Vegas Strip. In the mid-60s, Pat and Lolly recorded and released the album Pat and Lolly Vegas at the Haunted House. Six of the 12 songs were original compositions by the brothers, which earned them some early success. They also appeared on the Shindig TV show quite frequently that they became regular performers. Eventually, they became noted and sought-after musicians, working with legendary producer Phil Spector, Tina Turner, Sonny and Cher, James Brown, Little Richard, Elvis, and numerous other artists. In 1967, P.J. Proby recorded his only top 30 hit, Nicky Hoagie, written by Jim Ford, Lolly, and Pat Vegas. The following year, Bobby Gentry performed the Cajun-influenced song on the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour and included it on her hit album, Ode to Billy Joe. The album, however, only credits Pat. He also wrote songs for... Aretha Franklin, and other artists. He also co-wrote the theme song to the Munsters television show. How the name Redbone was decided on is an interesting narrative which involved Jimi Hendrix. In an interview, Pat recalled that he and Lolly were working at a club in Los Angeles on the Sunset Strip. One day, Hendrix walked in and heard them playing. Jimi took off his jacket, ran up on stage, plugged in his guitar, and started playing with them, jamming for an hour. Jimmy was so impressed by Lolly's playing, declaring that Lolly Vegas was the best guitarist he had ever heard. That was certainly quite a compliment coming from Hendrix. According to Pat, Jimi Hendrix himself part Cherokee inspired the musicians to form an all-Native American rock band. According to Pat, Jimi Hendrix, himself part Cherokee, inspired the musicians to form an all-Native American rock group and suggested a name that signified their heritage. 
The term redbone is a Cajun term for a mixed-race person. The band adopted the word to indicate their mixed ancestry of Yaqui, Shoshone, and Mexican heritage. The band frequently alluded to the Cajun and New Orleans culture in their songs and performance technique. In 1969, they signed with Epic Records as Redbone. The band at that time consisted of Pat and Lolly Vegas, Peter DePoe, and Robert Anthony Avila, a Yaqui Mexican-American better known by his stage name, Tony Bellamy. Their debut album, Redbone, was released in 1970. In 1972, the Witch Queen of New Orleans reached number 21 in the U.S. and number 2 in the U.K. and remains a Halloween favorite, much like Bobby Pickett's number 1 hit in 1962, The Monster Mash. In 1973, Redbone released a fifth album, Wovoka, which included the most famous iconic song, Come and Get Your Love. It was certified gold, selling over one million copies. Also in 1973, Redbone released the album We Were All Wounded at Wounded Knee, recalling the massacre of the Lakota Sioux Indians in 1890. It charted in several European countries and reached number one in the Netherlands, but did not chart in the U.S. Its release was initially withheld due to controversy over the lyrics. Being a sore subject, it was banned from airplay by several radio stations. In 2014, Come and Get Your Love was featured in one of the opening scenes in the film Guardians of the Galaxy. This helped reintroduce the band's music to a new generation of fans. It was also included on the film's music soundtrack album. As their popularity grew, they appeared on TV shows such as The Midnight Special, American Bandstand, and at rock venues by sharing bills with Marvin Gaye, Kiss, Steely Dan, among others. Redbone's music was characterized by the Leslie rotating speaker effect and by Peter DeBose's style of drumming, characterized as King Kong. Their music has been covered by numerous well-known artists such as Bobby Gentry, Tom Jones, Aretha Franklin, Tina Turner, Burton Cummings of The Guess Who, Dwayne Eddy, Robert Palmer, The Ventures, and Cindy Lauper. In 1998, Redbone appeared as the presenters at the Native American Music Awards. In 2008, Redbone was inducted into the Native American Music Hall of Fame and the legendary New York Smithsonian Museum of the American Indian in 2013. Redbone is recognized in the Smithsonian as the first Native American Cajun rock band to have a number one single in the U.S. as well as internationally. In Fresno, California, Redbone was also honored with a mural, currently the largest in the U.S. On August 30th, 2014, Pat Vegas was honored with the Lifetime Achievement Legend Award in the West Coast American Indian Music Awards. And in 2018, he was also awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award at the Indigenous Music Awards. In 2009, Redbone member Tony Bellamy passed away. The following year, the co-founder of Redbone, Lolly Vasquez Vegas, passed away. As of 2021, Pat continued to tour in the U.S. and Canada, supporting his solo albums. He is also part of a touring version of Redbone that performs his solo work, as well as the Redbone hits. Current Redbone members include Pat Vasquez Vegas on bass and vocals, PJ and Frankie Vegas on vocals, Travis Huffman on guitar, and Danny Richardson on drums. This has been a Rock and Roll Flashback, a look back at the Native American rock band Redbone. I'm Bill Price, and until next time, Rock on, Rock on.